Om Sang Saraswati Namaha. Namaste. Please, everybody who has a book, recite along with us. Umbu swaha, umbu va swaha, um swa swaha, umbu bu a swa swaha, a sa triti o diya su tu va cha swaha. Punar kre prabhakshami, sinu dhamani satava, purachoka mukho nama, nimastati mahamati. Jitendriya Satyavabi, Yayoti Bhava Kyamrati, Dine Dine Dananda Twa, Sadvi Jan to Shakyat Sudhi Swa. Bargyatasya Pramukdacha, Suroja Badana Sati, Bhadrasila Nadi Tire, Sadyasa Bratamacharat Swa. It has me not to rate the drum, Sadureka Samagata, Pani Chartam Bakudan here, and it here put it put it as far. Navan Samstaka Tati Ray, Chagaman Ripatin Pati, Trishwasa Pratinam Bupam, Prabacha Vinagan Vita Swaha, Sadur Vacha Swaha. Kimidan Kuru She Rajan, Bhakti Utena Teta Tham, Prakashan Kuru Tatsarvam, Sotumi Chami Tampatam Swam, Rajavacha Swam, Pujanan Priyate Sado, Vishnu Ratula Teta Tham, Pratancha Svatani Sadu, Patradya Bhakti Makam Yagaswa. Bhupasya Vajanam Srutvam Sadhu Prohacha Sadaram Sarvankatagami Rajan Krishya Anta Bhotitam Svam Mamapi Santatir Nasti Vitasma Jaya Tedruvam Tatoni Pritya Bani Jat Sadhananda Griya Magata Svam Bhargaya kati tam saram, Vratam santati grayakam, Tada vratam karishyami, Yadabhe sati tir bhavet svam. Iti lila bhatim paham, Patni sadhu satatma, Ikasmin diva setasya, Bhargaya lila bhati sati svam. Bhatri Uttana Dham Chitta Bhava Dharma Parayana Karbini Sabha Bhattasya Bhargya Satya Prasada Tatsva Dasani Mati Vaitasya Kanya Ratna Majayata Dine Dine Sada Vrite Shukla Pakshe Gata Sati Tatsva Namna kalabhati chaiti Tanama karitam pitam Tatoli labhati praham Swamini madhuram bachat swam Nakaro shiki martam ve Pura sankapitam pratam Sadhuru hacha swam Vibhaka samaye hatyasya Karishyam hi pratam prakye swam Yeti Bhargyo Samasvasya Jagama Nagarampati Tathahakalabhati Kanya Pabridevi Pridevishmani Swam Drishtvakanyam Tata Sadur Nagare Sukhidhi Satam Mantra Yitwa Drutam Dutam Prishayama Sadharma Vitswam Vivarhartam chakanyaya Param shrishtam vicharakya Tena gyapta chakvayu duto sao Kanchanam nakaram yato svam Tasmadikarvani putram 
สมาได้หากเธอหิสระวิสปาทุสันดรามบาลังปณิพุทรังกุณานพิธัมสวาเกติบีร์บันดบีสาร์ดัมปุริทุสเตนเดชิตตาดดอสัตุสปุตราหะขัญญาบิดีบิดานัตตาสวาตโตบัตยาบัชเชเทนามิสมิตังจัตมุตมัมวิบาทัสมาเหตัสยาสเทนารุดราบบัตุบังพระบุษวะทัตตาคลินเดนิยโตนิจขามาบิสารดาปานิจัตตังกัตหาชีกรัมชมาตรีสกิทาเปนิกสวะรัตนาสภูริบรัมเยกัตวาสินดุสัมมิปัตตาสปนิจจมาคโรชีกรัมจันมาพระสิมันทังสกัสวะทุกตนนักเรียบรามเยชันเคตุรนิพัชชะเอทิสมินิบกาลิตุสัตยนรายนะพระบุษวะอมบุษวะอมบุวะษวะอมสวะสวะอมบุบุวะสวะสวะอ n ชั่ e ที่สองสุตะคอนติเนียร์ทิสเนรัยชินโอ้เกรทซีจิสลิสเซนทูดีสตอรี่ของเกรทคิงอุลตามุกผู้เป็นทั้งพระทูตและวิจูวิสในสิ่งที่เขาทำอุลตาเป็นเหมือนดวงอาทิตย์บนดาวเหมือนเมฆในดวงอาทิตย์และมุกเขาแสงสว่างเหมือนดวงอาทิตย์ในดวงอ่า so the king whose face shines like a light in the darkness he was both truthful and virtuous in his behavior he and his wife prayed daily in the temple worshiping the supreme lord and feeding the poor and the hungry what a wonderful way to worship God very much like Jesus suggested if you can't see me in the poor and the meek then you don't know me in reality Serve the poor, and you'll find my grace. One day, while they were performing the Satyanarayan puja on the bank of the b a d r a s i l a River, a rich merchant by the name of Sadhu came to them. Hey, interesting. The 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 businessman, the rich merchant from the Chandi, was also named Sadhu. Uh, he's a, he's not quite a Sadhu yet, but he's going to become a Sadhu. You just wait and listen to the story. So Sadhu, this rich merchant, came to them, seeing the royal couple deeply engrossed in devotion. Sadhu inquired about the nature of the worship they were performing. The king replied that anything a man wishes is fulfilled through the devoted performance of worship. Define your goal. Take the sun k o p a And step by step, according to the procedures of the k r a m of the organization of actions, vidi par vidi, each step along the way, you will fulfill your goal through the devoted performance of worship. If you do your task as a worship, you will achieve success. Anything a person worships. The, worship, the merchant replied that he had no child, and he promised God that if he were blessed with a child, he will definitely perform the vow of worship for s a t y a n a r a y You go first. And the king informed him of the details of the puja of the vow to speak and act in truth. And the merchant Sabu returned to his home to tell his wife of his resolve to perform the Satyanarayan puja as soon as God blesses them with a child. By God's grace, his wife Lilavati gave birth to a baby girl whom they named Kalavati. So Lilavati is the repository of the divine drama. 
She is the, the, in the spirit of all the drama of, of creation, the whole lila of, of existence. And Kalavati, she has the, the spirit, the repository of all attributes. She has all the Kalavas. Do you know in the Swami Purana we defined all 64 of the Kalavas, the, the special arts that any respecting woman will want to be master or mistress of. So they named the girl Kalavati. As the child was growing, Lilavati reminded her husband to perform the Satyanarayan puja as per his promise to the Lord. But Sadhu replied that there was no hurry. The puja could be performed later when her marriage would be performed. When Kalavati became of marriageable age, the merchant joyously celebrated her wedding. Once again, his wife reminded him of his promise to perform the puja, but instead of performing the worship, he decided that his business was more important and taking his new son-in-law with him and a large amount of money, he went to do business in the kingdom of King Chandraketu. Sri Satyanarayan Bhagawan Ki Jai! Umbu swaha, umbu la swaha, um swa swaha, um her la swa swaha. Brashta prati gamalokya, sapam tasme pradataban. Darunam katinam chasya Mahadukam padishyate swaha Ekasmin diva se radyo Dhanamada yataskara Tatreva cha katasto cha Vanijo yatra sanstito swaha Tatpascha dava bantan dutan Krishna bhitain tetasa Danan Santapya Chaitreva Satushi Brahma Lakshita Sva Tato Dutta Samayata Yatraste Sajana Nabikni Vistva Dipa Danan Tatra Dadwa Dito Danik Sutta Sva Hashinata Manascha Uchu Nipa Simi Pata Tuskaro dwa samani tau Milo kya kya pa kya prabho tsva Ragya kya tasta tahashi gram Dirham badwa tatastu tau Stapito dwa pahadur ge Teradari vichar tatsva Maya ya satya devasya Natsrutan choice to tor vacha Tatasta yor tanang yadya Rihita gen chandake tu nasva Tasta pacha tachor yehe Bhargya chay bhati dukita Chore na paritam sarvam Rie yachastitam tanam sva Adi yadi samayukta Shukhi pasatsu dukita Anachinta Prabhutva Prabhama Chakriye Priye Svam Kalabhati Tukanyapi Prabhama Pratibhasaram Ekasmin Endivaseyatam Shudartam Vijamandiram Svam Katva Pastya Enbratam Tatram Satyanaraya Nashyacha Upavishyakatantritva Brahmapati tatavapi Prasadabhachanam kritva Eoratrobriham pratisva Mata kalabhati kanyam Tatayam asapritmata Putri ratrostita kutra Kinte manasi bhartate sva Tanya kalabhati paha Mataram pratisatvaram 
Vijalaye Bratamata, Vitamachita Sididam Sva, Tatrutwa Kanyata Vakyam, Pratanka to Smudyata, Samuda Dabani Barya, Shatyanarayan Dashachaswa, Pratanka Kreja Boy Sadvi, Pandavi Svatani Saka, Batu Jamataro Chipra, Magachi Tas was Bob's Ramam Swam, Aparadam Chame Batur, Jamatu Shantu Marasi, Pratina Nina Tushto Saw, Satyana Rayana Puda Swam, Darshaya Masa Swap Dagi, Tandaki Tun Ripotamam, Bandina Mochaki Pata. Bani Jovi Pasat Matswa, the young Nant at Satar Bam, read on that way Aduna, no Chitwan Hashigi Shami, the Rajang and Danabut Rakamswa, even my Basha Rajanam, Dana Gamyo Babatu Prabhu, the Prabhas the Samiki. Raja Chasva Janisa Katsva Upavisha Sabha Madhye Raja Swapna Antanam Prati Vado Mahajano Shigran Mochaya Dvoba Nisto Tau Sva Iti Radyo Vachaha Srutva Mochaya Dva Makajano Samaniya Nipasya Gre Prochuste vina candita sva Anito dho bani putro Mukto nika da pandana Tato mahajano naratwa Chandati tuni potamam sva Smaranto purva pritantam Nachatur varya bevi polao Rajavani suto vichyam Vachaha Pravacha Sadaram Swam Dweva Kaptan Hadukam Itani Nasti Vaibhakam Tadani Kata Satsagyam Shoramadhyaya Dukhagat Swam Vaspra Alankaram Datwa Hristosyami Paschato Vaspritya Dani Kutro Vachasato Shakyabrisham Swam Pura di tam tu yadra vyam Dvi guni tritya dattaban Provacha to tato rajam Gajetam do erjindas ramam sva Rajanam pranipatya Gantavyam tvat prasadata Iyutvat ho mahabhoishyo Jagmatu Svadri Hamrati Sva Iti Sri Skanda Purani Reva Kandi Sri Satya Narayan Brata Kata Gyan Triti Ovadhyaya Sva Om Bhu Sva Om Bhu A Sva Om Sva Sva Om Bhu Bhuva Sva Sva Sri Satya Narayan Bhagavan Ki Jai The Lord became angry due to this negligent behavior. At that time, a robber was stealing some valuables from the king's treasury, and as the palace guards chased the fleeing thief, he threw the stolen goods near to where the merchant and his son-in-law were sitting and ran from the scene. Finding the king's treasure in their possession, the two merchants were arrested and thrown into prison. Then the king's guards confiscated all the wealth they had in their ship, and because of God's anger, no one would hear their defense. At the same time, the merchant's home was robbed, and his wife and daughter, having nothing to eat, were forced to beg for their food. As they were out begging one day, Kalabhati came to the home of that Brahmin. 
who was engaged in performing the Satyanarayan Puja. She sat there enraptured with devotion, and after the performance, she partook of the Sapad, the Bhaksha Prasad. Returning home to her mother, Kalavati told of the divine experience she had shared by participating in the Satyanarayan Puja, whereupon her mother, Leelavati, explained that all of their calamities occurred as a consequence of their failure to perform that very same vow of worship. Her dad didn't keep his word. He said as soon as he was blessed with a child, he would do the puja, and then he said he'd do it later when she's married, and then he said he'd do it when he came back from doing his business. Then Lilabhati and Kalabhati performed the worship with the greatest intensity of devotion and prayed for God to return their husbands to them and to forgive all their wrongs. Just as they were praying, Lord Satyanarayan appeared in, to, to the king Chandraketu in a dream telling him that the two merchants were not guilty and instructing him to, fill, to free them and return their wealth. When the king arose from his sleep, he immediately sent for the two merchants to be brought from the prison. He returned their wealth to them and honored them with many presents, whereupon they returned to their ship. Here ends the third chapter. Sri Satyanarayan Bhagavan Ki Jai! So here we have a clear illustration. The first two chapters were about people who were true and fulfilled their vow and did what they said they would do and they got the fruit that they want. They wanted the old Brahmin became a man of substance and he had plenty of time for worship and he spent his time in worship. The woodcutter became a man of wealth and he inspired many people to, to, to worship God and he had a noble family and beautiful sons and he became very prosperous. And now we have this, in the other king, King Ulkamuk, whose face is radiant like the light of the night. And he, he, he and his queen were, were performing the Satyanarayan Puja. They were truthful and virtuous and they spent their time in worship and they fed the poor and the hungry and they took care of the needs of their community. And then here comes this crazy guy, Saab. Uh, and he says, sure, give me what I want and then I'll do the puja. And then when he got what he wanted, he didn't do the puja at all. He said, I'll do it later. And then when later came, he said, wait a minute, I'm not ready to do this. I'll do it later again. And now he's in deep trouble. Well, his daughter came to the house of the Brahmin and said, what a way to spend a life. He's praying every day. He's doing, he's honest, he's truthful, he's virtuous, and he's generous. And here he invites me into his house to partake of his puja and to share in his love for God. What a kind soul. I'm going to do that puja myself. And she learned how to do the puja. She went home and said, Mom, I just learned how to do puja. And Mom said, you know what? Leela Bhatti said, yeah, all of these problems that we're having now is because your dad made a promise that he would do the puja and he didn't do the puja. And the puja was the, the ratification of the promise to tell the truth and do what he's going to say, what he's, say what he's going to do and do what he says. And he didn't do that either. And the merchant lost all his wealth and went to jail. And the mother and the daughter lost all their wealth and they had to go to bed. Now the mother and the daughter sat there and started to worship with real sincerity. What a way of life. Can you imagine having God live in our house, in our hearts, in our lives? What a privilege it is to have God there. What a, what a joy it is to get up in the morning and know that my first duty is to sing. 
to God. It's to worship. It's to do puja. And just as they started to do the puja, the king, the God came to the king in a dream and said, hey, those, those merchants aren't guilty. And as soon as the king woke up in the morning, he said, hey, bring me the merchants. We'll set them free from the jail. Bring them here. God is their witness. And he returned all their wealth to them. And he gave them great honor. And he gave them even greater wealth. And then they returned to their ship. Well, this is chapter 3. Do we have any questions, please? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Tell me on page 221. The, the king says that a man, man's wishes are fulfilled through the devoted performance of worship. Yes. In fact, he says anything a man wishes is fulfilled. Yes. Does that mean that you can uh, overturn your character by praying to God? Yes. It does mean that you overturn your product. That means your past karma, which is inuring to, in the future, which is going to come to land in the future, huh, will be different if you worship. And let me tell you how it will be different. Remember we talked about Karabda Karma as the arrow that left the bow in the past. And here we are in the present waiting patiently for those arrows to land. Now if we're watching the arrow, we're going to respond when it lands. We're going to say, oh, it hit the target and I'm so happy. Or it missed the target, I'd better shoot another arrow. So we prolong the prarabdha karma by shooting another arrow, by reacting. However, if we are engaged in nitya karma, in eternal karma, in the karma which in worship, and we're loving God, who cares where the arrow lands? What difference does it make to me? My, my new goals are defined. Anything a man wishes is fulfilled through the devoted performance of worship. What do you wish when you're worshiping with devotion? More devotion. So it's all fulfilled. I don't need that anymore. It's not important to me. That parapta expires, expends itself. Because we're free from reaction, we're free from attachment. Now we're attached to a new goal. I want more devotion. I don't want more stuff from the world that's going to make me stay away from God longer. Let me tell you a story. One day, Shiva and Parvati decided to visit some devotees down on earth. They went to the home of a very wealthy man. And he said, Oh, hello, Shiva. Hello, Parvati. I'm just counting my day's receipts. Let me finish my counting my accounts, and I'll finish counting the money because I don't want to make a mistake and have to start over again. Uh, you just sit there on the sofa and wait. I'll just be done in a few minutes, and then I'll be glad to, to greet you properly. And Shiva and Parvati sat down on the sofa and watched this man counting his money and Parvati said to Shiva, doesn't that guy know that everything he got came from you? And he's ignoring you to pay attention to what he, he got? He's so proud of his, of his wealth. He has so much attachment to his wealth. He would rather spend the time counting the money than to pay attention to you. Shiva, give that man a curse. Shiva said, I curse you. Let your wealth increase. <laughs> Parvati scratched her head and didn't quite understand. 
But they got up and left the man counting his money. And they went down the street to the home of a very, very, very poor man. This man was so poor, he only had one cow. And the man and his cow lived together in the same hut. And when he saw Shiva and Parvati walking up to his house, he immediately bowed down, shashtanga pranam. And then he picked up his kamandala and he poured some water over Shiva's feet and he washed both of their feet. And he ran back and he milked the cow and he made some, uh, some sweets and he fed them and he honored them and he gave them such loving seva. Parvati said, Shiva, I am so pleased with the devotion of this devotee. Please give him a blessing. And Shiva said, I bless you. Your cow will die. <laughs> Parvati was stunned. The two of them turned around and started their journey back to Koilash. And in route, Parvati couldn't hold her peace any longer. She said, Shiva, I don't understand you at all. I asked you to curse the rich man. You said, I'm giving you more wealth. I asked you to bless the poor man. He said, you said, your cow will die. What kind of justice is that? And she was at poverty. The rich man was so busy with his wealth, he didn't have time for us. You asked me to curse him, I gave him even more wealth, so he has even less time. The poor man, you asked me to bless him, and I took away his last attachment on earth. And you see, he's coming to Kailash along with us. So here this poor sadhu is praying for the curse of Shiva. <laughs> and ask yourselves, how many of us are praying for Shiva to curse us? And how many of us actually are ready to give up our last attachment to this earth? I have another question. Namaste, Nandama. You can add value to it and enhance it. And uh, in certain circumstances, you can even complete the karma left behind by others who are very closely related to you. The disciple can complete the sankalpa of the guru. The wife or husband can complete the sankalpa of her spouse. A child can complete the, the sankalpa of his parents. But generally speaking, we want to complete our own sankalpa. So therefore, we must be very careful to divine things that we can actually do. It is possible under special circumstances, but generally we want to be careful to define our own sankalpa that we can complete. And in extenuating circumstances, in very special circumstances, there is a possibility. For example, if Srima desired to donate her ashram to the devotees. Then, when she left her body, if that task wasn't completed, it would be incumbent upon me to do so. That would be my sankalpa to fulfill her desire. In the same way, if a husband and a wife, a son and a, a, a parent, and a devotee and a guru, uh, they can complete the sankalpa of the guru.
Namaste, Kali Ma. Yes, generally we take names, uh, we, uh, we are given names uh, in the English, generally oftentimes they don't mean much, but when we get a Sanskrit name it's indicative of qualities that we want to inculcate in our own lives. For example, you are Kali Ananda and you are, uh, uh, Kal means darkness and Kali takes away the darkness and you are the bliss of she who takes away the darkness, who illuminates the light. Uh, you have a very special name and a very special function which you are growing in each of you. And the same for all of us who take names in our spiritual tradition. These are indicative of qualities and characteristics, of kalas, of attributes, uh, and uh, 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 attributes that we wish to inculcate. Gauri, she who is rays of light. Vishweshwar, who becomes one with the Supreme Lord of the entire universe. Uh, Srini, Srinivasan, who resides in the highest respect, the highest wealth, or within whom the highest respect or the highest wealth resides. Every one of us has taken a name or been given a name by our gurus or our parents or our Pugjan, uh, the, the, those respected elders who have preceded us, to give us an indication of the qualities and attributes that we want to assume as we grow into our fullest potential. That's the, the significance of taking a spiritual name. Namaste Kumari Ma, there is physical, which is tangible, perceivable, prataksh, we call it in Sanskrit. You can perceive it through the senses. And there is metaphysical, which has two aspects, either pratyai, which is conceivable in the mind, or prakash, which is illuminated through meditation or intuition. So, prataksh is the gross body, the tangible body. Pratyai is the subtle body, the, where we conceive. And uh, prakash is the causal body, where we know through meditation, through intuition. They are the stool sharir, the shukshma sharir, and the karan sharir. These are the gross body, the subtle body, and the causal body. Now, what is metaphysical is beyond the physical. And that means spiritual. If it's bringing us closer to godliness, if it's encouraging us to be givers, because we define spiritual as giving more than we take of freeing ourselves from the debts of karma and living according to our dharma, our highest ideals of perfection. And this is metaphysical, beyond the physical. Now I realize that it's very common for some, for many spiritual seekers to look for a physical verification of their metaphysical or spiritual experience. So people come and say, I have this vision, or I have this sensation, or I have this... <laughs> Why would we cheapen our metaphysical experience and bring it down into the physical? Metaphysical means beyond the physical. So it's enough to be spiritual in your life. It's that about having this twitch here or this, uh, 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 this sensation here or any other physical verification. It's metaphysical. 
It's beyond the physical. It's spiritual. We want to be in a bob, in an attitude, in a relationship with life, and a relationship with the world, and a relationship with God, so that we can feel it's metaphysical. You only know it through intuition. Not because you have a sensation in your body. So that is something about metaphysics. Well, if our heart is actually the temple for, the, for God, then yes, it is a, a, it is a necessary prerequisite. It is a condition precedent for God to move into the temple that it be a true temple. And that means we're not going to defile it in any way. We're going to treat it with as great a respect as we possibly can. And in order to treat it with respect, we're going to treat others the way we will want to be treated. The way we want to treat ourselves, we'll treat others. So therefore, our value system changes, our goals change, our, our methods change, our path changes, our spiritual life becomes most important to us, and we partake of the material life insofar it's necessary to keep us on the spiritual path. We need as much from the universe as is required in order to pursue the spiritual goals that we've uh, uh, defined for ourselves. We don't need just more stuff. We, then we become like the rich merchant who's just busy counting his money. He doesn't have time for Shiva or poverty. And Shiva will curse us. He'll give us more. Watch out what you pray for. Because you may get it. <laughs> Boy, are you going to get it. <laughs> Ad nauseum. Please. So I know there's no, no reason to, to lie or to be hurtful, but sometimes we do. And how um, do you resolve that, especially in terms of times sort of people that you can't make a mess for? Well, there are many things that we can do to seek resolution. First is be more vigilant not to do it again. That's the first recognition of our mistake. The second thing is uh, where it's possible to make amends, we can. The third thing we can do is be forgiving to others who have made the same mistake because we see how easy it is if I can make that mistake. I will want to be forgiven. So we'll practice forgiveness and compassion. Both of those ingredients will enter into our lives in real time. Those are some of the things that we can do in order to rectify the errors that we've made. Kumari Mom, all the Sankalpas are spiritual. Even if we pursue material wealth as a result of our actions, we're doing so in the pursuit of, of support for our spiritual growth. I don't just want more money or more stuff. I want more money in order to support the sadhana that I want to do where I won't have to think about money. So actually there is a spiritual goal even in a material action. Sometimes we recognize it and sometimes we don't. If our real goal is to retire to the 19th hole and sit and watch all the other duffers come in, 
and sip mint juleps, uh, then perhaps we have a blatantly materialistic outlook on life with no spiritual value. But if our goal is to create honest wealth so that we can share with others and even share the processes of which, through which we've created the honest wealth, well then, this is a valid goal to empower others and to <coughs> empower ourselves to be even more spiritual, to have even greater time and greater resources to perform the spirituality that we see. Namaste, Bharati Ma. Because there are two questions there. Let's deal with the first question first. Uh, there are four people who will come to God. Four types of people are lovers of God. Uh, a person of physical pain says, take away my pain. A person of mental anguish says, take away my conflict, my confusion, my anguish. Lovers say, bless our union so that we can be in love. And the fourth is wise people. Now, unfortunately, the wise are too few and far between. Most people say, God, as soon as you bless me with a child, I'll do the puja. As soon as you give me what I want, I'll do the worship. And then they forget all about it and say, oh, it's not important, I'll do it later when she gets married. Then they get into pain. They find themselves in difficulties, in anguish, in anxiety, in conflict. And they say, God, please take away my conflict. I'll worship you right now if you'll take away my conflict. <laughs> Lovers say, please give us a license to practice our love. And then, when they start to practice all the, the, the formalities of being in love, they forget about God. <laughs> and they get burdened by all the responsibilities of being a, a family person with all, so many obligations to fulfill, so many burdens to lift. Wise people say, hey, I just want to worship God as a way of life. That's just what I want to do. My goal in life is to make a life filled with worship. Now, Bharati, the second question you asked is why do you have to organize it? You have to organize it because if you don't have a plan, you're going to fit into somebody else's plan. And it will be impossible for you to stay focused on target if you are subject to the dictates of another person's plan. You must organize it yourself because that demonstrates the sincerity of your love. Bharati, when you want to make us a cake, you, you decide I'm going to put in this much flour and this much mix and this much frosting and this, many, this much milk and how much sugar do you need for Swami's cake? These are all decisions that you plan in your sankalpa in order to make the cake that we'll all enjoy to eat. <laughs> and our guests had three pieces today. <laughs> and thank you for organizing and planning that cake. My good friend said, let them eat cake. <laughs> and today we did. <laughs> Thank you very much. Without that definition, without that organization, without that sankalpa, you wouldn't have made such a delicious cake. And that is a puja that is well appreciated. So thank you. Uh, 
Sadhu Ma. <laughs> Namaste. Uh, the first ingredient is to define what it is that we want to do. And then the second thing is to create a budget for what we will need in order to do it. And now we have the understanding of what resources will be required in order to accomplish our goal. So now we'll pursue the, those resources that are required for our goal. The rich businessman just wanted more. And I've asked that question of many people, what do you want? And many people responded, more. And they didn't say, I need this much to perform or to accomplish my goal. This is how much I need. Very, very, very few people have that understanding. And when they get that amount, even a greater number of people who do have that understanding, when they get the amount that they need, they say, well, now I need a little more. My goal changed. Very few are the sadhus, sadhu ma, who say that in order to do sadhana full time, I will need these resources. And then they work towards those resources and then stop and work for God. Now that is a true sadhu. And I bow to you, sadhu ma. Because you are a true sadhu. Hi, Wendy Ma. Hi, Sam. Do you remember when Rishi Gautam cursed Ahalya? Ahalya was the most beautiful woman and she was married to Gautam and Indra wanted to enjoy with Ahalya so much. And one day, Gautam got up early in the morning and went to the river to take his bath and Indra said, I can't wait any longer. And he took on Gotam's form and he went into Ahalia's cottage and did the deed. And he came out from the cottage and Gotam came back from the bath at the river and he saw another man wearing his form coming out of his wife's cottage and he got mad and he said I curse you Indra you'll have a thousand eyes and you'll be impotent and then Ahalya heard the commotion outside the house and she came running out to see what was going on and as soon as she saw her husband and another man wearing her husband's form she knew she had been deceived. And Gautam got mad and he said, Ahalya, I curse you. You become a stone. And Ahalya said, wait, he was wearing your form. How was I? I was duped by this duplicity. He cheated me and you're cursing me? And Gautam said, you should have looked inside. Why did you only look at his outside? If you had looked inside, you would have known that he was a cheater. And that's why you're cursed. Ahalia became a stone. And she sat there for thousands of years until Ram came. And Ram came along with Vishwamitra and Lakshman. They were en route to Matilla. And Vishwamitra said, Ram, you see this desolate ashram? This is a very special place. And Ram said, yes, but in the middle of all this desolation, there's a stone. 
with a tulsi plant growing out in the middle of the sky. And Vishwamitra said, you know, everyone knows how to apportion blame to a sinner and to give curses to the fallen, but there are very few who can redeem the fallen and make them pure again. You touch that stone with your foot. Ram touched the stone with his foot and a halya came out of the stone. And she looked into Ram's face and she said, I thought my husband had cursed me, but now I realize that his curse was my greatest blessing because I get to look into the face of God. What a privilege it is to me to look into the face of the Redeemer of the fallen. Wendy Ma, as you look through the, all the culture and all the history and all the curses and all the blessings, they all became a blessing. Every one of the curses became a blessing. It only appeared to be a curse because I didn't get what I wanted at that time. But ultimately, every one of the curses from the gods, from the rishis, from everyone in our mythology, and all the stories, and all the histories, and all the Puranas, Nana, Nigama, Agama, in all the stories, every one of the curses became a blessing. Don't be worried about the curse. Om Sang Saraswati Namaha. Namaste. Well, we ran out of time. Are there, are there other questions, or should we save them for the next uh, our, our next uh, evening? Okay. Uh, if you don't mind, then uh, we, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you, Sam, for joining us tonight. I haven't heard from you in a long time. And namaste to Wendy, and namaste to Davy and Angel. Uh, namaste to the whole family. Thank you all. Hey, we, you know, we're broadcasting in 53 countries now, and this is really exciting to be able to share the, the love of, of, of the scriptures and the wisdom of God uh, in, in, in this way. Thank you all for participating and empowering us to do so. Same way.